In today's Business Spotlight, we're going to be looking at pricing mistakes. And this is not for just startup interior designers. It's for pretty much everybody who is running an interior design business because the question about what to price can change throughout the trajectory of, um, uh, of taking on projects. So you might start with small projects and you get confident with pricing those and then you uh, want to start working on larger projects. And then once you get your first project, you come across this problem again. So the, the typical issues that I see are, um, are what we're going to go through today. But it's not just one. I think what ends up happening is they kind of compound. So if you don't know what you're doing, you do one and then you do the other and then all of a sudden you're doing all three and it's a big mess. So follow uh, the mistakes and then try and resolve the problem. And I've given you a solution for each. So let's have a look at them. The first mistake is not using a pricing strategy or system at all. And this is where a lot of people get, get it wrong because they just kind of pick a number or they do what other people have been doing and uh, or what other people have told them that they should price. And not having a strategy means that you're not thinking holistically about all of your services, your marketing and how all of these things impact the thing like the price. So it's not just the price of a service, it's all of these things holistically. So you also need a system for pricing, a tried and tested system that um, gives you a profit margin, that thinks about all of your overheads, all of the things that come together to actually set a price for a project. So I've given you um, uh, a five-step system. So have a look at one of the blog posts um, in this series and follow the steps. It's really simple. It's a system that is tried and tested and it has um, worked for me successfully in my business as well as all of my mentees. So just having a system and just having some strategy that is holistic um, in your interior design business when it comes to pricing. It's the biggest mistake not having any of this. <laughs> so just plucking a number out of thin air is not a good idea. Have a system. The next mistake is copying another interior designer's prices. Ah, <sighs> This is my pet peeve because I... In my experience, a lot of people don't know what they're doing and because of that, a lot of people keep copying people who don't know what they're doing and then this it just becomes this big like snowball effect of um, everybody really confused and everybody pricing really poorly. So the main thing to look at here is look at your services, what you need um as your expenses. So if you have a system and you've priced it, your um, interior design surfaces, services in a way that makes sense to you, it doesn't matter what someone else is charging because you're going to be presenting the value to the client um, and you set your fees according to what services you're providing but also what you include for the price. And I think this is really key and this is where most people forget that other interior designers might be working faster or slower than you or they might be offering the same thing on the, on the outside but you don't actually know the details of what they're actually providing for the price. And this is really where copying someone else's system uh, prices literally falls apart because you don't know um, – well, it will also mean that you don't have uh, – uh, anything that distinguishes you apart from that other designer. So everybody looks the same. And so a client will try and talk you down on price because they're going to try and price apples for apples and they don't see the value in the difference. So they think this interior designer is charging this and this interior designer is charging this. And so you're both the same. You're both offering the same thing. And so you should be the same price. And that's not how you should be marketing your interior design business, not how you should be setting your prices and not how you should be um, working and creating services. So as an interior designer or in a business owner, you're unique, create a unique, and you also have a unique set of skills and um, uh, a unique set of services that you're creating for a client type or a project type. So this all comes together and you can't, I mean, you could possibly copy somebody else's client type, but you don't know if it's profitable. So it always comes back down to trust yourself, trust that you know what's best for you, how much your outgoings are, 
and how much profit you need to make to be the best designer that you can be. And so it's <laughs> it really comes back down to being confident with your pricing and understanding um, the system that you've created for yourself, even if you just do the basic thing, which is just work out your overheads and how much profit you'd like to make. It's so much easier than copying someone else's and just getting it so, so wrong. And the last one is pricing what you think the client can afford. And this is a really difficult one because every time we send out uh, a fee estimate or, a, or um, we price some our services, we do consider what the client will think. And there's often for, uh, for experienced as well as uh, new designers, you, there's this fear that comes out there, oh my gosh, I'm not going to send this amount because it's even if you've worked it out perfectly, it's, it's going to seem too much. But don't confuse what a client is willing to spend on um, a project with them not seeing the value in what you're offering. So it's in the presentation. If you understand your market, if you understand your client, if you understand the project type and all of these things and have created a service that um, is perfect for your client at a price point that you understand is um, uh, what they are willing to pay, you have more chance of being a success as an interior designer than you ever would just by you know, thinking that they can't afford that, so dropping your price. And that is really, really um, the scariest part because a lot of us do the working out. So you've done steps one and two actually quite well, which is um, having a system to follow and then um, having a strategy. Then you're also, you're not copying other interior designers. You're um, building your interior design services and as a holistic approach, looking at your services, your prices and what your outgoings are and all of these things that all come together in your marketing, your brand to the right type of client and the right kind of project. And then you <laughs> can you see how all of this can just fall apart as soon as you are too nervous to click the button to say, yes, this is what my price is and I'm going to backtrack and um, give, uh, give a lower uh, price because I'm so afraid that they can't afford it. The thing is, your client, if you've worked everything out perfectly and uh, the client comes back and says, I really can't afford this, you've gotten it wrong because you've gotten your ideal client type wrong or you've overshot the mark somehow. So you have to go back and look at your marketing and who you're attracting, who you're trying to um, uh, persuade to purchase your uh, services with your um, uh, with, with the services that you're providing. So for example, I would at this ta stage in my career never approach um, or try to sell my services to a really uh, first-time house buyer market because I'm too expensive for them. Typically, a first-time house buyer is not, it's not their forever home, it's their first property. House, they're overextending themselves to a point where they're really spending a lot of money just trying to get the house in the first place. So it's... It's not the kind of um, uh, client that I, at this point in my career, I'm going to aim for because uh, they can't afford me. <laughs> so in the same way that I understand my market right now, you want to get to that point where you get this perfect yes from your client because you know and understand what it is they want from you, how much they can afford and how much they're willing to spend on a project. So somebody who's bought a one million uh, dollar property is not going to spend three million <laughs> on furnishings. So uh, there are certain things that you need to consider in your market research and finding that sweet spot is really what this is about. So what I said at the beginning is really don't, uh, don't confuse or don't assume that your client can't afford you. It's what they can afford and what they will pay are really two different things. And that's it. Yes, there is more to pricing uh, interior design services than meets the eye, but it doesn't mean you can't get it right. Start with one service, perfect it, get it right, and then refine it and make sure that 
the offer is right for your target market and you'll see the sweet spot. It becomes easier to price. It becomes easier to sell. And all of this all just comes together because you're offering services that you love to offer, your clients want it, and there's this easy, happy medium. And that's what you're aiming for.